Huh? No, they just wait. They're going to stand over here by the end. You're good. Um, you two behind.
welcome each one this morning to Temple Baptist Church. We're so grateful that you're here with us this morning. We're looking forward to a wonderful day as we worship the Lord together. And I trust that the time change has been gracious to you and uh, that uh, you're coming in and uh, with a heart of worship this morning. And that's what we've came here to do is worship the Lord. And I trust that you allow your heart uh, to be helped by the singing the preaching of the Word of God. It's already been a wonderful time around the campus this morning with a Bible teaching uh, and classes for adults and children. And now we're looking forward to a wonderful worship hour, not only this morning, but also tonight. And so let's worship the Lord in our hearts and minds together. We want to pray and ask God for His help and His blessings. And so let's do that at this time. Father, we love you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here once again this morning. Thank you, Father, for our church family. Thank you, Father, for their faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for their dedication unto you, Lord. Thank you for their heart of service, their spirit. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come and worship you, to be reminded of you. Lord, I pray that you would bless, Lord, the singing, the preaching of the Word of God all throughout the day today as we meet this hour. Lord, as we have baptisms, Lord, as we uh, come back together tonight and worship you again. I pray that today would exalt Jesus, not ourselves. We love you. I pray that you would draw people to you. Lord, if there's someone that's not saved, that they would trust Christ as their Savior. And I pray that you do a mighty work in our midst. We need you. We love you. Bless now, please, the choir, the special singing. Bless our children, fathers, they're over in the educational building, and all the volunteer staff. I pray that you give them a wonderful time of instruction, encouragement over there spiritually. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. The choir is going to sing for us once again. I know you'll be blessed as you listen this morning.
will stand together all over the building this morning with a smile and a song in our heart. Let's lift up our voices unto the Lord. He's worthy of our worship. Let's worship Him together as a one mighty choir all across the auditorium this morning. back to your seat. We're going to sing that third verse together this morning. Great things he hath taught us. Great things he hath taught us. Great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder Everybody now, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice, oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Remain standing if you will worship song this morning, one of my favorites that we sing together. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Two verses together. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Oh. Uh -huh. 
remain standing. Ushers, you come forward at this time, if you will, please. It's time to receive our offering for the day. And I want to thank you so much for your faithfulness and your involvement in giving unto the Lord. It's part of our worship, and uh, and that's a way that we keep our staff uh, able to be here, and also our lights, and uh, lights on, and air conditioned, heat, and so forth. And uh, so we're very grateful for your giving. You can give online or in the play uh, online instructions that are on the screens this morning. I want to remind you of a few things uh, or give you an update on a few things. We announced Wednesday uh, that we are able to purchase a needed uh, bus for our church and ministries here. Uh, God is blessed. We've outgrown our a 15-passenger van. We'll keep that. It's, we use it constantly. We put quite a few thousand miles on it since we purchased it quite a few years ago. And we were given a large amount of finances to be able to purchase a bus. And uh, we purchased the bus, got an extremely good deal in it, as we highlighted Wednesday. And uh, that's now getting cleaned up, or in the process of getting cleaned up this week. And we've took it over to get it positioned so we can get over to the cleanup shop this week. We're excited about letting you see that sometime very soon. We still haven't got insurance. We don't have tags or anything on it. We just purchased it uh, Wednesday. And so we're excited about using that for the glory of God. And uh, then also, uh, I want to say, if you're here for the very first time, Uh, I trust and hope that you have received a visitor gift packet, and we just want to make sure everyone has received one of those. If you have not uh, received a gift visitor packet and you're here for the very first time, would you raise your hand just really quickly? We want to get one to you, and I'm looking around. I hope everyone got one. Okay, wonderful. And if you'll look inside there, if you'll you'll, you'll find a visitor card, and if you'd be so kind, use that pen also provided there, fill out that a visitor's card, place that in the offering plate when it comes by. We'd love to have record of you being here with us this morning. And again, of course, we're so very grateful that you're here. I do need to remind you about our Easter services coming up this month in just a few weeks. And we're so excited about uh, splitting off in two services this year for the very first time. We'll have an 8.30 early service that will include an Easter sermon as well as special Easter music. We're excited about that. We'll receive our offering and all of that. Then, the ele- then we'll have Sunday school, or adult and children's Bible classes at 10 as normal. And uh, the early service will conclude at about 945. And then 11 o'clock will be our regular worship. That is when we'll have our nursery, our wiggle worms, our children's church and junior church. Choir will be singing. Same message that preached in 830 will be 11 o'clock unless I just really lay an egg. And then I might switch it up and or let Houston Pendry preach. But, uh, you know, I'm joking. But... Lord willing, God will bless and help us with that. We're so very excited about Easter. I want to encourage you to grab some outreach cards on your way out and uh, invite people now. Don't wait till Friday or Saturday before Easter. Go ahead and invite them now. Get a confirmation. Encourage them to be with you. Tell them you'll save a seat. We should have plenty of seats available. And we're excited about you coming and being with us each or any of those services. Then we'll also have the 6 o'clock p.m. service as normal. So keep all that in mind if you will. After the service this morning, uh, we're having folks join the church this morning, and then we'll go right over uh, for baptism, and we're excited about that over in Heritage Hall. So please join us, if you would please, after the service over in Heritage Hall for a baptism. We have quite a few to be baptized, and we're very excited about that. We're also excited about some uh, brand new remodeling we just did in uh, Heritage Hall this week. Uh, We had a lot of help in doing that. Uh, We put up acoustic sound panels over in Heritage Hall to help a little bit with the acoustics and the echo there. And then we also repainted uh, the Baptist and the baptistry was in need of repainting and updating a little bit. So we're able to do that and we're excited about that. Some of you will notice, uh, some of you old timers will notice the cross has been taken out, but a new cross has been installed. And uh, we're hoping, Lord willing, one day uh, when we build the new auditorium out here, uh, and this goes back to the gym and all of that, that we can put that cross that was used since 1993 in the old auditorium as a beautiful uh, front entrance piece to our new sanctuary. And and so we're we're gonna, Lord willing, it's a a big one, so we're gonna have to have a big entrance, okay? But uh, that's the plan. And so uh, we're excited about using that. So that cross is in, in storage, if you will, for the next uh, probably three years. And so we're excited about that. And so I want to encourage you to get by there and see that. A couple other announcements that I'm going to 
to give you while you're standing. I'm going quickly here. Uh, but uh, don't forget about our Wednesday night service. We're in our series of First Peter, going a verse-by-verse -verse study of that. So keep that in mind. Also, Kids for Truth and Team Program all happening uh, Wednesday night, as well as our regular outreach and going out and telling others about Christ. Also, the Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship, after the service this morning and also before and after the service tonight, we'll be having the Spring Craft and Bake Sale today and uh, a silent auction is also going on over there you just sign the piece of paper about how much you want to give to certain items there'll be ladies over there to help you with that if you like to uh, help uh, if you need help with that okay also this tuesday march 12th is a widowed ladies luncheon at southern family restaurant at 11 30 if you have any questions please see beverly smith about that teen activities this saturday march 16th if you have any questions about that see brother miss holly our super saturation saturday uh, highlighting uh, Easter invitations is uh, this coming Saturday, also the 16th. Uh, we'll be meeting in the Activity Center from uh, at 930, going out from 10, 930 to about 1030, 1045. We're excited about that. I highly encourage every family to be a part of this canvassing and door hanging. Uh, people don't know about the Lord. And as surprising as that is in North Carolina, people just do not know about the Lord. And they certainly do not know about Temple Baptist Church. And, and so let's work hard to invite people and do the canvassing and be with us for that. Also, the Young Adult Fellowship activity is next Saturday, March 23rd. There's a sign-up sheet in the entryway. I want to encourage you to get by there and see that. And if you want to go play putt-putt with us, and I'm really excited about that activity. And uh, we got a lot of families signed up already. Please uh, see that as you leave today if you would like to be a part of that. Also, our Easter Spectacular is happening March 30th on a Saturday from 11 to 1. We need volunteers. We have quite a few. Half the page is already full, but we need quite a few volunteers to help us with this. We're asking for church members to help us with this. Uh, it's a big event. We have a lot of bounce houses and a uh, big Easter egg hunt and uh, concessions, uh, hot dogs and snow cones and popcorn. It's all free. It's a community and church event, and we encourage you to come and be a part of that, especially for the kids. And so keep all that in mind. We have other announcements, other things that are coming up in the month of April. We'll make mention of those tonight. So please keep all those in mind, if you will. Let's pray, and then you can be seated this morning for the offering. Father, we love you. Thank you for, again, allowing us to be here this morning. Thank you for our services. Thank you for our church family. Lord, thank you for their hard work. Lord, their involvement, their spirit. And Lord, I pray that you bless now the remaining part of the service for your honor and your glory. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. How great thou art. I appreciate that very much. Take your Bibles, please, and turn with me, if you will, to Psalm chapter 95. I always want to encourage you to bring your Bible and turn with me 
so that we can see the Word of God together. It's very important that you bring that with you. Psalms chapter 95, I made reference to the other service. I don't know if it was a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, I cannot remember. But uh, I love having the Bible app um, eSword on my phone. When I installed it, it was free. I understand now it's a 2 or 3 $4 charge, and, uh, but it still be worth it for that. And, uh, but uh, I think that's good to have it on your phone. And I, again, I have it on my phone and can look up the meanings of the words, the Greek and the Hebrew, and uh, very vital. Uh, if I need to search something, uh, if, I can, if I can remember the phrase, but I can't remember where that's at, the Word of God, it really, that search bar helps me and that e-sort out. But, uh, but I always want to encourage you to bring your Bible to the house of God. And don't replace that with some device. Don't ever do that. Uh, there's something special about the Word of God. And uh, if I look across the congregation, I see everybody looking on the phones. You can tell me all day long, Pastor, I'm looking at my Bible. But I just something just doesn't process that in my mind. I'm thinking to myself, they're texting, they're looking on the news, and they're looking at all that. And by the way, I want my kids to know that I'm looking at the Word of God. And uh, you say, you shouldn't do it for a show. I'm not. But I just want them to know that my mom, that, uh, that uh, mom and dad are, are holding the Word of God. And, uh, and I th- think that's important. Psalms chapter 95, we're going to read the whole chapter. And for some of you that didn't bring your Bible, you're, gonna, you're panicking right now. It's only 11 verses, and uh, so we'll be all right, okay? Psalms chapter 95, raise your hand if you missed that hour of sleep last night. Okay, so about 40%, and uh, it affects us, doesn't it? And uh, I thought I got it, and uh, I thought I improvised and made up for it. We'll find out about 4 o'clock today. And, uh, but anyway, Psalms chapter number, five, number 95. And if you were alive this morning, would you say amen? Amen. amen. 90, <clears throat> Psalms chapter number 95 this morning. Verse number 1. The Bible says, O come, and let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock. Of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Verse 3 For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. I want to talk to you this morning about this subject, our great God, taking right out of Psalms chapter number 95. Now don't miss tonight. Tonight at 6 o'clock we will be concluding our series on the home. And tonight, uh, I really, if if you have missed any of these on Sunday nights, I really would like for you to end it up on the last one at least. And be with us tonight at 6 o'clock. Go home, get you a nap, uh, and be here for choir practice. Amen. And be here at 6 o'clock. Um, because tonight we're going to be talking about personalities in the home. And we're going to be looking at a family that, um, that uh, had twins, twin boys, and they were so distinctly different. And everybody in the home was different. And how do, how do we cope with that when everybody or nobody is just like me? Don't you wish everybody was just like you? And uh, so we're going to be talking about that tonight. So don't miss tonight, 6 o'clock. You say, oh, pastor, I'll catch it online. No, 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 no. That's, what that, that's not what that is for. And uh, if you've if you're, if you got a 105 degree temperature, that's what that's for. And uh, so let's be in our place it, tonight at 6 o'clock. But this morning... I want us to look at the fact that we have a great God this morning. Let's pray, and then we'll have another song, and we'll get right into this thought this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for your blessings upon us. 
Thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you for uh, speaking to my heart about it uh, earlier this week. And, Lord, I pray that you would give me clarity of mind. And, oh, Lord, that you would help me, Lord, this morning. I need you. And I pray that you would speak to me and speak through me and use me, Lord, as a vessel, as a tool, as an instrument in your hands to magnify your name. Lord, you know me. You know I need your help. I can do nothing apart from you. And I, I beg of you to help me this morning and use me to be a blessing. And Lord, I pray that you would draw each one of us to you this morning. I pray that, Lord, if there's someone that's not saved, that they would trust Christ as their personal Savior. And Lord, if there's someone here that is saved, Lord, their heart is hardened and is not right with you. Lord, that you would draw us all closer to you. And Lord, that you would help us to realize and remember what a great God we have. And we hope to exalt your name this morning. And help us in our, just our, in, our, in our inability to exalt your name to do it as you would have us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise His dear name, all that I love. 
so much. I appreciate that this morning. As with many chapters in the book of Psalms, the writer here in chapter number 95 is exalting our great God. I highly encourage you, if you are not reading your Bible on a regular basis, to begin doing so and start in Psalms chapter 95. Or excuse me, start in the book of Psalms if you're not reading your Bible uh, to begin reading these Psalms. They're very, they're very easy read and uh, they will bring you in a closer relationship with God. There's no doubt about that. If you open up your heart and, and read through the book of Psalms, you don't have to start. I think sometimes we, we say, uh, you know, I'm going to go on my diet and I'm, you know, I'll pick on my wife and I'll say, I'm going to start my diet. It's going to start today and I'm going to run 30 miles today. When I'm not running anything now, and uh, and I'll just you know blow it out of proportion. Sometimes we think I'm going to start walking with God and start my devotions, and uh, and I'm going to read through the Bible this year. Well, that's great, and I, I think that's a wonderful goal. But uh, don't don't overload yourself at first. Just read through the Book of Psalms on a daily basis. You're going to miss a week. You're going to miss a day or two, but just keep on keeping on. But many of the chapters of Psalms exalt. The Lord and exalt God. God is great, and the psalmist pins down these words as he is led of God to describe just what a great God he is. Now, most of us know we have a great God. If you believe that we have a great God, would you say amen? amen. We have a wonderful great God. And however, many times it is important to be reminded of this truth on a consistent basis. And as we're reminded of the greatness and the goodness of God, it will draw us closer in relation to him, uh, relationship to Him. It's very, it's very important to preach on sin and, you know, don't do this and don't do this. And very important to, uh, to exhort, hey, you need to do this and do this and do this as a child of God. And challenge people to serve the Lord. It's very important to preach on salvation. And it's very, very important. There's so many things that a preacher and a pastor wrestles with during the week and different thoughts. And as he prays and seeks God, not out of a magazine about what to preach. Amen? Uh, but uh, God has just put this in my heart because often, many times, we need to just magnify the Lord. And I want us to see three things from this chapter 95 that we just read. The first one is the invitation that we find here to get to God. The second one is a declaration of our great God. And the third one is uh, something to consider regarding our great God. Now, the first one, I want you to notice, number one, if you're taking notes, an invitation to our great God. An invitation to our great God. Look with me. If you brought your Bible, look with me, please, in verse number one. And let's say the first two words together. Ready, begin. Oh, come. Now, you can do better than that. Here we go. Ready? Let's try that one more time. Oh, come. So we can be thankful this morning that we serve a God who invites us to himself. Aren't you thankful that we do not have a God in heaven that sits on his throne that created you and I that is in his own little bubble? And he says, don't get near me. You're a sinner. You mess up. You make mistakes. You do your thing. I do mine. Aren't you thankful that we have a God that says, oh, come? Aren't you thankful that we have a God that invites us to himself? I think we talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, and, and by the way, it's very important that we do not live in our little bubble. COVID, such a bad word, COVID really just pushed us over the edge. If there was people living in their bubbles uh, before COVID, man, they got it sealed up really good during COVID. And uh, it is very important that we do not live in our own little bubble. Listen, there's people that need you. There is your family that needs you, and, and we've got to be careful. And I understand sometimes we get a little overloaded with people. I understand that, and we need to have a correct balance of private time and our own lives. And, and, uh, but understand that uh, there are people in the world without the Lord Jesus Christ, and they need someone to take the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to them. But God says to us, to you and I, who are sinners, O oh, come. And we have this invitation not only to God, of course, but the psalmist is inviting us to come to God. We have an invitation here to proclaim our great God. <clears throat> Notice in verse number one, 
It says, oh, come. Notice what it says. When we come, what are we to do? Let us sing unto the Lord. And it goes on, it says, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And so we are to, we have an invitation to come and to proclaim our great God. And may every one of us this morning take an opportunity to proclaim our great God. In other words, proclaiming is to tell others about how great God is. You say, Pastor, I'm afraid that that just does not fit me because he has not called me to be a pastor. Well, that's where you're wrong. Because you are, if you are saved, if you are a child of God, if you have called upon the Lord for salvation, we talked about this a week or two ago, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives for Christ and God desires each one of us to proclaim to others that he is a great God. Man, I can think of many ways that we can proclaim our great God. Number one, we can get in the choir. I pick a little bit about being in the choir, and I pick about making sure that you have a good, uh, that, you're, that you can sing on key and so forth. But listen, we need to pack this thing out. Uh, this year, uh, next month or two will be good. We need to pack this thing out. I want to encourage you, listen, if you're here and if you have to be a member of our church, uh, and, uh, but if you're here and, and you say, Pastor, I, I would love to proclaim the greatness and the goodness of God. I cannot think of a better ministry that does that than the choir. I encourage you to let Brother Holly know and say, Pastor, Brother Holly, I'm thinking about getting in the choir and I've never done it before or I've done it before, but I'd like to be a part of the choir. Get Brother Holly, text him, message him after the service, get with him and talk to him about that and, uh, because that is a great Great way to proclaim that he is a great God. What about when you're out at the bank or when you're out at the grocery store or with your neighbors to proclaim, tell others what a great God we have. I think about our outreach program and the ministry, just the ministries here and how we have opportunity each and every week uh, to uh, go out with door hangers to proclaim to others the greatness of God. But that's not all. Not only do we have an invitation here to proclaim to others the fact that we have a great God, but we have an invitation here to uh, come before the presence of our great God. Look in verse number 2. In verse number 2 it says, Let us come before His presence. I was sitting in my office and I thought about something for the very first time. Something just hit me, just like that. And I thought to myself, why does that say that? Because God is omnipresent. In other words, that means that God, <coughs> excuse me, is everywhere at all times. And if God is omnipresent, <coughs> if God is everywhere at all times, then why would we need to come before his presence? I want you to ask yourself that in your, in your heart and mind this morning. If God is everywhere at all times, then why would we need to come before his presence? Perhaps it means to acknowledge him and to seek him at a specific time and place in an appropriate manner. I don't know about you, but if I were to go have an invitation to the president of the United States, regardless of how you feel about the president of the United States, that his office is to be reverence. His office is to be respected. I hope that you pray for the President of the United States. I hope that more than you criticize and more than we critique the President of the United States and the more than what we say he should never be doing that and he, this, I, 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 I can't stand him. I hope that more than we as children of God are critiquing the president that we are seeking God on his behalf and saying, God, help our country. Lord, help our president to turn to you and do that which is right in thine eyes. It is a biblical mandate. And so, my God, help us to do that. And so, uh, but if I were to go to the president of the United States, you know what? I wouldn't wear my flip flop. I don't care if it's 90 degrees outside. I'm hot in nature. I don't know if you know that or not. I'm hot in nature. I burn up all the time. I'm very hot. And I, I freeze my wife out of the house. And um, I'm hot in nature. But listen, I'm not going to go in a tank top and shorts and flip-flops to go see the President of the United States. Why? Because it is a, it, there's an appropriateness about that. You say, well, I, you, you, I don't care. You know, he don't, you know, and all of that. No, uh, you get invited and see how you dress up. I mean, we dress up for weddings. 
the other, uh, just uh, we had a date night, my wife and I, Friday, and uh, those are precious these days. And uh, we had, went out on a, on a date night. We, uh, my mom and dad kept our kids. We used to have a date night every Friday night, and now they're every other Friday night because my mom and dad just can't keep all the grandbabies at one time. We had the first, uh, but then there was now there's multiple. And so they keep them every other Friday night. And uh, so we were out on a date, and my wife says, Hey, look, we got a wedding to go to in a, in a week or two, and we got to get the girls are in the wedding. We got to get some. Uh, Got to get some uh, shoes for the wedding and had to buy these shoes and so forth. Why don't we dress up for a wedding? He said, oh, I don't dress up. I wear, yeah, let me see these pictures. He said, I wore my blue jean. You wore, probably wore a blazer with that too. Did you tuck in your shirt? Did you comb your hair? Did you brush your teeth? I got amazed. We, we do all these things. We, do, we dress up for other things and, and, uh, and, uh, but we, we, we act like church is just something just we don't care about. And why, we, why do we dress up? Why do we look our best? You don't have to wear a tie. We don't have any dress standards here in any way. But uh, we, we, we have the guidelines and so forth for choirs and people in positions of leadership because we, we want to make sure that they are sending forth a message of appropriateness and godliness. And it is biblical uh, for godly apparel. But understand that uh, we, we, we want to look our best for the Lord Jesus Christ. I was reminded... Of some pictures, as a matter of fact, I think it was on social media, of pictures of comparison and how, and I'm not throwing rocks and being critical at all. I'm just simply trying to state a purpose of coming before God and his presence and, uh, and talking about how uh, we ought to appropriate ourselves in that fashion. Because a lot of uh, uh, the uh, ESPN Center, the uh, sports center on ESPN, the sports broadcasters, news anchors, most of them have a tie, if not a tie, some type of button-up dress shirt with a blazer. I, know, I watch, I see that. Most people, in posi- all the political leaders, most of the political leaders have on a nice tie, at least, uh, not a tie, at least uh, some type of blazer, button-up shirt, something nice. Ladies wear dress or some type of formal attire. Why? Because they are putting their best foot forth into what they believe in is to be important. And yet many times, and it was a picture right beside a picture of churches and religious circles today where they look like they just rolled out of bed. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of world are we looking at? And and people that have that mindset are going to say, well, we want it to be acceptable to a culture. Well, you don't find that anywhere in the Word of God. Nowhere in the Word of God. It is complete opposite. Notice again in verse number two, and I'm not, I'm not saying, we don't have dress codes here. And, uh, but listen, the re- listen, I hate ties. If you come tomorrow, I will not have a tie. Matter of fact, I was working here yesterday and I had my ball cap on and, and, uh, and uh, I call them basketball pants and a t-shirt. And I was painting, working hard and and, uh, and doing all kinds of things at the church and babysitting my kids so my wife could go to ladies' meeting and different things. I said, I don't have a tie on, but you know where I put on a tie? I don't like these ties. This one didn't tie very good this morning. I'm, I had to unbutton it right now so I can breathe. Do you know why I put on a tie? Because I'm coming before the presence of God. And I want to be respectful unto my God. There's a certain time that I have purposed in my life to say, God, I want to think about you. And I'm coming before your presence. And I'm going to, uh, uh, to magnify your name. And I want to do so. I want to at least look my best. Hey, listen, if, if shorts and a tank top is the best you got, then that's fine. God bless you. Come on and worship the Lord. But I want to look my best. You have an invitation to come before the presence of God. May we come before God's presence publicly, but may we come before God's presence on a private basis as well. Listen, I think it's wonderful to raise your hand and worship the Lord. I'm for it and I'm with you and I do it. I'm for saying amen, but before we do it in a public setting, may God help us to always do it in a private setting. I think people probably think I'm a little bit crazy for many reasons. One reason I'll go down the road and I'll hear a song and I'll be worshiping prop, privately. Nobody else in the van. I'll be worshiping the Lord and maybe some tears will be running down my eyes. And I can't help but, and I know you're not supposed to. I know you're supposed to put both hands on the wheel, ten and two. I understand all that. But I can't help every once in a while to just take one hand off for just a second and just to say, thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. But listen, if you don't do it in private, may God help us never to do it in public. May we have a come before in God on a private.
privately basis, on a daily basis, it'll help you. And maybe we do it on a public basis. We have an invitation here to proclaim our great God. We have an invitation here, verse number two, to come before the presence of our great God. And then we have an invitation to praise our great God. Look in verse number six. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. You know what that nailing does? Do you know what that bowing down signifies? It signifies a humility which is in the sight of God of great price, which God is looking for. God resists the proud. If you have pride in your heart, understand that is something that God hates. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. But God hates the pride. He hates the pride just as much as he hates abortion and drugs and murder and homosexuality. God hates pride. And many of us have it in our hearts on a regular basis. But this eliminates the pride when we get on our knees and we say, God, I just want to come before you and tell you what a great God you are. It eliminates, it cuts out the pride. May God help us to do that on a regular basis. But I want you to notice that praise is different than proclaiming. Remember our proclaiming? Proclaiming is to tell mankind about the greatness of God. But praise is to tell God how great he is. Now, God already knows that because not only is omnipresent, in other words, he's everywhere at all times, but he's omniscient. God knows everything. God knows how wonderful he is. But you know, he wants it to come off your lips. He wants you to be a part of telling him how great he is. You say, well, pastor, I'm sorry, I just can't sing. Well, why don't you let the one who gave you those tonsils and those vocal cords be the judge of that? Because the Bible says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. And I believe in congregational singing. I believe that everyone that is a part of a public service ought to give our voices up unto the Lord the very best we can, whether it's on key or whether it's not on key, to exalt the greatness of our God. May we have an understanding there to give Him praise. Now, notice, notice the next thing, and that is a declaration of our great God. The declaration, not only the invitation to proclaim him, to tell others about him, an invitation uh, to praise him, and an invitation to come before his presence. But then there's the declaration. I've got to hurry. Nobody said amen, so I guess that's okay. I don't have to hurry. I still don't hear any amen, so I guess that's okay. All right, the declaration of our great God. The psalmist declares two things here. About God. One, he declares that he is a great God. Now, you say, Pastor, you've been talking about the greatness of God and how great is great, but you didn't tell us why. Well, here we are. Number, verse number three, we can see God's greatness as king. It says, For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Not only do we see God's greatness as king, but we can see God's greatness as creator. Look in verse number five the sea is his. The sea, now, I want you to think about that. It, I, I, love the, uh, I love history, but I, got, I had to take a couple of lessons of science going up through school, too. And if I'm not mistaken, 97% of, and now I may be wrong here, I didn't write this down in the notes, 97% of the world's uh, body is made up of water. Is that true or false? Somebody help me. I'm hearing a lot of truths. 97% of the earth's mass is made out of water. 3% of the land, 3% of earth is land. That's, that is really, I mean, that's, that's, there's no equal, there's nothing equal with that at all. I mean, it's, think about that. God doesn't have to say the land is his. God says, and look in verse number five, the sea is his. And he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. God didn't leave it out. He said, everything is mine. So we can see the greatness of God, not only as King of kings and Lord of lords, and the world will see that one day, but we can also see the greatness of God as his creator. Notice not only that the psalmist declares that God is a great God, but the psalmist declares that God is our God. Now, I like this portion of the, thought, the message this morning. We can be thankful today that God is our Creator. We're talking about how the psalmist is declaring God, the declaration of God. He is a great, he's a great God, but he is our God. Look in verse number six. We can be thankful that God is our creator. Verse number six, it says, O come, once again, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord. Say it with me. Here we go. Ready? Our maker. 
Think about that for a minute. You were created by Almighty God in the womb. The Bible teaches us in the book of Jeremiah that the prophet, God says, I formed you, I fastened you, and I knew I, 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 I made you a prophet. Before he was ever born, God formed him in the womb. God had a responsibility and a purpose for his life before he was ever born. God knows those little infants in the womb. God had created them. God has created you. He's a great God. I, I think about those babies I had the opportunity to be present each time my wife had our children. And uh, what a, what a so impressionable moment in life. And you see those little beady fingernails. I mean, that just got me right there. I mean, just tiny, but the, the detail that God put involved in that. The eyeballs, the eyelashes, these tiny little hairs. Uh, the, the, just the little toenails, all the little bitty little toes there. The, just, the, just the specific details of those children. And, and people say there is no God. When we can't, even find, we can't even figure out how the human body completely and totally operates. We've got, a lot of, we've got a big handle on that, but how much of a handle we don't have on it. And I want you to think about that. We have a great God. How the birth of a child and creation... The rising of the sun, the going down the Rav, and the ocean tides, the ocean, God just says, stop right there. I mean, 97% of the earth is water, and it just happens to stop right in a certain perfect area. I mean, what's causing that from just coming up? And sometimes it does, tsunamis and stuff. But I want you to just think about the world as a whole. What's just think about the water just coming over and just saying, okay, we're going to take out the country, Troosh, you know. I mean, it just stops at a certain point, and the tides go in, and tides go out, and all the animal life speak of the greatness of God. We can be thankful for that God is our creator. We can be thankful that God is our Savior. Look in verse number 1. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the who? Under the who? The rock of our salvation. Not only do we have a great God and he is our God, he's our creator, but I'm thankful that every one of us this morning can have the opportunity to call him our Savior. You say, Pastor, what does that mean, Savior? A lot of people get confused about that. That's not been uh, acquainted with the gospel and the word of God. Some people say, yes, I've been saved because I was in a car wreck when I was 13 years old and I've been saved. I was at the, I, I died, Pastor, for six seconds, and I read line, and I, I, bottom line and all of these different things and stories that we've all heard, and the truth of the matter is that maybe you have gone through some certain situations, but that is not what biblical salvation means. Biblical salvation, the rock of our salvation, gives reference to the fact that we are a sinner. It gives reference to the fact that we're, there's a punishment because of our sin, which is death and eternity in a place called hell. It gives reference that Jesus loved you and I so very much that he died in our place. And he was God and he came down here to became man and died for our sins, bled and he died for our sins. He was buried and rose again three days later and ascended back to heaven. And the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible teaches us that with the heart man believeth under righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, biblical salvation, the fact that God is our Savior, means that once I realize I am a sinner and that I have to be punished because of my sin, but I realize that Jesus took my punishment of death upon him, then I can call upon him for to be saved from being a sinner. And God saves me not only from being a sinner, but God saves me from the eternal punishment in hell. And he promises me eternal life. That's what the pro prophet is referring to here. Salvation. And I want to say to you this morning, if you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm glad that we take uh, opportunity, time, one-on-one -on -one to help you understand how you can know for sure that you are saved and that you have that promise of eternal life. So the, the psalmist declares that we have a great God. He declares that he is our God. He's our creator. He's our savior. And I love this one. In verse number seven, look there with me. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. You know what God calls you? A sheep. We're sheep, and he is our shepherd. 
And sometimes sheep don't make very wise choices, including me. As all sheep sometimes wander and stray. Sheep cannot protect themselves. Sheep are one of the dumbest animals. Sheep do not have horns to protect themselves. They don't have sharp claws. They don't have an aggressive behavior. Uh, sheep uh, are just kind of out there for themselves. They eat as much grass as the other one and, and, uh, and, 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 and buck it when they try to get shaved. And they don't really like it, you know, and they're just kind of living their life. And that's why they have to have a shepherd. Even today, in society today, in other countries, they have to have a protector. They have to have somebody to guide them and lead them and, and to protect them. And that's what God is for you and I. And we're reminded that in Psalms chapter 95 here, in verse number 7, that he is our shepherd. Aren't you thankful that God didn't just save you and leave you alone? He's given, you, given us his spirit and he's given us his word to guide us and lead us. And he says in his word, if we'll pick it up and read it for ourselves, you better not go there. You better not be buddy with that person. You better be careful with where you go. You better get straightened up because God is our shepherd, cares for us, and he loves us. Amen. Number three and the last point this morning, and that is the consideration about our God. Now... I don't want to, well, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, I'm going to say that. <laughs> a lot of that was introductory thoughts. Now, this is, the message is very short. But I want us to look at thirdly, and probably, I don't know if it's more important, but I want you to really give your attention for the last few moments of the message, and we'll be done. A consideration about our great God. In this passage, I want you to notice several things to consider. We've talked about our great God. We've talked about that we have an invitation to come to Him, to declare Him among others and tell Him how good He is. And then we talked about our God and how wonderful it is. But the psalmist gets down to verse number 7. And he gives us some things to consider. The first thing, I'm looking at the time, I will not be long, but I want you to notice in verse 7, there is a tongue that you and I desperately need to consider. The psalmist goes back and references the nation of Israel when they really weren't much of a nation. They were slaves in the country of Egypt. And God allowed them to go through some, through, uh, out of Egypt and get out of slavery through some miraculous, miraculous events as we read in the book of Exodus. Parted the Red Sea for them. And they went on their way to Israel or Canaan or the promised land that God had promised Abraham, the father of the Jewish nation, many years ago. And they were going through there and God said, I want you to do this and I want you to do this and I don't want you to do this and I want you to trust me. And the psalmist gives reference to the fact that they failed to trust God. They failed to listen, God, because of their hardened heart. And so the psalmist says to you and I today, by way of application, listen to the voice of God. Verse number 7, look at it today if you will hear His voice. There's a lot of voices on social media. There's a lot of voices on the television that, that fight for importance. Listen to me, this is what I've got to say, this is what I've got to say, this is what I've got to say. But none of those voices that you hear, whether they're voices in your head, or whether they're voices from a family member, or whether they're voices from a social media or a podcast, none of the voices that are in your life that are battling for concentration in all of your mind are near to the importance of the voice of Almighty God. And I want you to make sure that you consider listening to the voice of of God. God's voice is very clearly heard through this book. You say, Pastor, I don't know what God wants me to do. Have you read this book? There is no point in me helping you if you have not picked up this book. Raise your hand if you can read English. Then you can read this book. I have a kindergartner. A kindergartner. A five-year-old little girl. They can understand this book just as easy as I can. 
She may not understand all the prophecies and all of those things and comprehend all that, although, Lord willing, she will one day as she continues to mature, but she can understand what we're reading this morning. Isn't that amazing? We don't want to. That's the heart of the matter. We don't want to. Listen to the voice of God. Pick up this book. Listen to the voice of God. If you're saved this morning, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, and usually I don't do it this way, but if you're saved this morning, would you raise your right hand and say amen? Amen. If you're saved, guess what? You have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling within you. He's there to guide you. He's there to speak to you, to say, you better not do that. Listen to His voice. Consider listening to the voice of God. Oh, pastor so-and-so, oh, doctor so-and-so, oh, psychologist so-and-so, oh, YouTuber so-and-so. I'm not telling you to dismiss their voices, but I'm telling you that if you are not considering putting God at the top of that list, you're in trouble. And I think that is one thing that is hurting our society is there's so many people that have their two cents worth of voice trying to be heard. And I want to be honest with you, my voice is not even two cents worth. But this book is worth everything. If I get out of this book, I hope our deacons say, get out of here. I really do. And if our deacons don't, then they're not much of a biblical deacon. I hope the men of our church would stay up and say to me in a private manner at first, Pastor, you need to get back to the book. You're talking about your opinions. And everybody's got quite a few of those. But they don't matter to much of nothing. Because the voice of God is what you need to be concerned about. You say, Pastor, you preach, you give a lot of scripture when you preach. That's because my voice don't match much a matter to nothing. My pastor used to say, it's about as dumb as a sack of doorknobs. You say, why did he say that? I don't know. But I would have to agree that a sack of doorknobs without doors is pretty dumb. My voice, apart from this book, doesn't matter to nothing. But when you get into this book and you proclaim the word of God... I beg you to consider it. The tongue to consider, but I want you to notice that there's a time to consider. And I want you to notice that's in verse number 7 as well. Look at it in verse number 7. Today, if you will hear his voice. There's an urgency to hear the voice of God. It is not tomorrow. God never says, I want you to think about getting saved if you are under conviction and guilt and realize I need to be saved. God never says put it off tomorrow. The Bible says our life is like a vapor. It appears for a little time and then vanishes away. The Bible teaches us uh, uh, do do not put your confidence in tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Today, if you will hear his voice. Now, today, consider today. I don't know what God wants for you. You have to decide that. But when you open up your heart, there's something special about a God who loves you and cares enough about you to help you know what that is. If you need to be saved, you'll know it. Say, how do I know if I need to be saved? You will know. How'd you know that you needed to put gas in your car? It's that simple. You will know. I need to be saved. I need to be baptized. I need to begin serving the Lord in this church. I need to begin... Uh, witnessing to others. God, the Holy Spirit, has a way as we listen to speak to us today. And then in verses number 8 through verses number 11, I want you to give special attention. The Bible says in verses number 8 through 11, this is the last point, we're done. There's no video announcements, I've already messed those up. Verse number 8. I'm trying to help you smile a little bit on this time change Sunday. You're helping me a little, but not as much as usual. Verse number 8. He said, Pastor, most of the time I laugh to help encourage you. And you don't know how much that's appreciated. In verse number 8, harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. In other words, don't harden your heart like the children of Israel did. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Some of you know that story. I won't go into detail of the story of the children of Israel. They got up to Canish Barnea, and because of their lack of faith, they could not go in. They did not trust God, and God made them wander in the wilderness. That would drive me nuts. 
I can't stand wandering. Ha, have a plan. My pastor used to say, have a plan, work your plan. I can't remember the de- details, but I got the gist of it. Plan your work, work your plan. That's what he said. Get it done. Do something. Tear it down, build it up, be productive. I can't stand just sitting around. Who am I? Where am I? That's what I love about the Christian life. There's so much to do for God. To proclaim Him, to come before His presence, to seek after Him in prayer. I've been amazed recently how God has answered so many prayers of mine personally for this ministry. It's unbelievable. But I want you to notice lastly again this trial to consider. This children of Israel went through this hard trial when they would not listen to God. And when we go through trials of life, and as many are and go through on a regular basis, we go through those trials of life, I want to encourage you to listen to the voice of God. Do not harden your heart. Do you know, my great God, I have done my best to help you realize what the psalmist in chapter 95 of the book of Psalms is saying. Do you know him as your Savior? Are you proclaiming the greatness of God to others in some form or fashion or way? Are you praising God for his greatness? Let's stand to our feet with heads bowed. And eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, we love you. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had to do our best to proclaim you. Lord, I pray that you would use your word to work in our hearts. Lord, I pray that if there's someone that's not saved, they would trust Christ as their Savior. Lord, help us to proclaim you in a great way, whether it's church or privately, publicly personally, whatever it may be. Help us in all of these areas. We love you in Jesus' name. With heads bowed and eyes are closed. When if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I know for sure that I'm saved. I know for sure that if I die today, I'm going to heaven because I've made that decision to trust Christ. And I know it and I remember that and I'm not ashamed of that. Would you raise your hand this morning? Pastor, I know I'm saved. Thank you. I see those hands. I wonder if you're here this morning and you didn't raise your hand. That's okay. I want you to be honest and I appreciate your honesty. I wonder if you're here this morning, you would allow me to pray for you in my private time with God. You would say, Pastor, I have to be honest. I'm not saved. I've never trusted Christ, but I know I need to do that. It's as, it's as obvious as can be. and I need to receive Christ. I want to go to heaven. I want to be saved. Would you pray for me, Pastor, that I would make that decision? I would be honored to. Would you raise your hand right now if you're like that? Would you raise your hand right now and say, Pastor, pray for me that I would make that decision to trust Christ. Anybody like that this morning? How about this morning? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you're here as a child of God, I wonder if you would respond to the invitation this morning. We give this time to help people to respond to God as He works in their hearts. And Brother Holly's going to sing for us. And as He leads us in this verse... I wonder if you would come and use the altar this morning as some have already done. Would you come and say, Lord, help me to proclaim you. Lord, give me boldness to do that better. As Brother Holly leads us with heads bowed and eyes are closed, would you come this morning? Come every soul I sin oppressed There's mercy with us
rich blessings to look this way. We have the Vessel family. Y'all come this time and um, they're coming this morning uh, for church membership, for baptism. We're very grateful for them. And Bethany, of course, has recently trusted Christ here and as well as Weston. has recently trusted Christ as his Savior. They need to be baptized. And then uh, Jody and Be- uh, Buffy have been, uh, know that they have been saved in the past but never been uh, biblically baptized. So we want to do that this morning. So what's your, uh, we need a motion to receive them as members. Motion, second, right here. All in favor, raise your right hand and say amen. And we love this family. Normally, we would give them the right hand of fellowship. We're going to ask them at this time if y'all would go. Jeff and Angela, if y'all would escort them over. And uh, we're going to let them prepare for baptism. And uh, we're excited about that for them. And uh, later on, we'll give them the right hand of fellowship. And uh, let them, I'll tell you what, we can still do that right now. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> All right. I want to invite everyone to come over and join us in Heritage Hall for the baptism. It'll be just a moment. We have another one as well to baptize. We're excited about that. And uh, if you're a uh, candidate for baptism, please make your way over to Heritage Hall. And we'll be participating in that. So please stay for that. Don't forget about choir practice, Sunday night service tonight, 6 o'clock, finishing our series on the fam- of the home. Please be here for that. Sign-up sheets all over for different things that we mentioned. Ladies, wish your prayer fellowship. Make sale in the activity center. Please keep that in mind as well. All right? Turn around, smile, greet one another. God bless you. You're dismissed. We hope to see you at Heritage Hall.